So is it possible to find an investment solution that will pay you a eight, nine, maybe 10% yield, still be safe, still paying their distribution and help you retire stress-free? You know, I'm not that kind of investor. I'm not looking for yield. And most of the time, the reason why is when you look for high income investment products, they look like this over the long time. So here you see the financial split 15 corp, North American financial split 15 and dividend 15 split corp. They all either not increase their dividend, either cut it off completely or either slashed it when there's a, uh, there, there's a problem on the market. And of course the value of your investment is also declining accordingly. Long story short, you invest for high income and in the end you see your income being cut and you see your portfolio being cut. Then is there any type of investment vehicle that will offer you something that is a little bit different and still help you to retire on high income? Well, so today we're gonna talk about Canoe Income Fund. So Canoe, Canoe, not too sure. <laughs> Actually, from a French guy, I would like to say Canoe, but I'm not too sure if it's Canoe or Canoe, so well, let's go with Canoe. So Canoe Income Fund, IET.UN on the Keynes stock market is an investment that started in 1997. So it's a close-end fund, which means that the company cannot issue more shares. So that's the difference between a mutual fund and a closed-end fund. And this fund has been around for a long time, which is great because then we can look at their performance. We can look at if it's, there's a catch, if there's a scam over there, or they're about to cut their distribution, or if it's really the Klondike for retirees. So whenever I look at a fund or an ETF, my first reflex is to look at what's inside. So the first thing is I'm going to look at the asset mix. So as you can see here, we see a close end fund that is focused hundred percent on equities. So mostly Canadian. So half of it is Canadian and the rest of it is a balance between us and international, depending on when you look at the website, you will see that the us and the international equity will vary uh, for a few per, uh, basis points, but most of the time you'll have, half Canadian and the other half is international with a big exposure to the US market with no or little cash and no to little fixed income as well. The next step I do is I look at the sector breakdown. So now I know that if I invest in Canoe, I know it's 100% equities. It means that it will fluctuate over time and when the market will drop, well likely the fund's value will also drop accordingly. Now in terms of sector, you see that it's wide diversified. So we have like 17% industrial, 15% in energy, then it goes to 14 in healthcare and then it goes down all the way up, all the way down to communication service with 1%. What I like about this type of sector breakdown is it in, it's aligned with my own investment rules where I try to never exceed 20% in one sector. The reason is quite simple is whenever you have an overexposure, so more than 20%, and it's not like a fixed rule, it could be 25, it could be 30, but the point here is identify your largest sector because if you're at 40% in one sector and there's a crisis in that industry, well, then your entire portfolio is at risk. So when I look at this one, it is well diversified in terms of market. We saw that in the asset allocation mix. Also well diversified in the sector. Nothing is above 20. Actually, nothing is not, not even close to 20. Like 17 is really not that bad across various sectors. So, so far, so good in terms of how it has been built. Looks like it's a promising investment. So now that we have established that this fund is all about investing in equity, so we're gonna expect some great returns. It is well diversified in terms of sector. The next step is to look at the top holdings. I love to look at the top holdings because then it gives me an idea of the investment philosophy because it's one thing to read about it, but it's another thing to see it in action. On this one, you see that most of those companies are paying a dividend, but they're not necessarily high yielders. So then I'm starting to think, well, how do they generate that 
like 9% distribution yield that they have right now. Um, sometimes it's even above 10%. So it's kind of interesting because you have companies like Lowe's, you have like um, Intact Financial, you have like a bunch of like low yield, high growth stocks in, in, in it. And as you can see, the top 25 uh, stocks will represent more than 70% of the fund. So those are the most important one. And what I like to do when I look at those, uh, those companies and to identify those that I would actually invest in if they would be aligned or not with my um, investment strategy and what I like in a company. In this case, probably a little bit too many stocks into the um, commodities, basic materials and energy to my taste, um, maybe a lack of this, a lack of technology stocks as well. And again, that's to my taste, but overall, I cannot say that those companies are like crazy high yielding companies about to cut their dividend. I don't see that there. And then some of them don't even pay a dividend such as the famous Berkshire Hathaway. So, so far, everything looks peachy. Great asset mix, great sector allocation, a good package of stocks a good yield. So now let's talk about performance, right? Because it's one thing to premise, to premise a high yield, but then you want to make sure that you're going to make money. Cause if you're going to retire, you have like 20, 25, 30, maybe 35 years in front of you, depending on the age of your retiree. And uh, of course, if you are healthy or not, but if you're 65 today, chances are you're going to live up till 85, maybe 90, even maybe 95. So you still need to have a very solid investment product in your portfolio. So when you go on the canoe page, you will see the performance over there. And what I found very interesting is they compare their returns to the TSX, which if we remember like two minutes ago, I told you 50% of the money is invested on the Canadian market and then they benefit from the growth on the US market and international market. Yet as a benchmark, they use the TSX, which doesn't make sense in my head. Uh, yes, of course, they outperform the TSX, but probably a good part of that is due to the fact that half of that money is not invested in a TSX. So they do not show a good benchmark. But in the end, if you look at the returns, one, three, five, and 10 years, even since inceptions, it's all double digit returns. So let, let me think that they do one or two things pretty good, right? So just for fun, I used Whitechart and what I did is I created a canoe income fund portfolio benchmark with a three ETF. So one tracking the TSX, one tracking the S&P 500 and another one that is an international ETF. Uh, similar to the proportion that are right now. So of course that changed over time, but I just wanted to have an idea of how it performs. And what is very interesting, and I started to do that comparison uh, about Canoe about three years ago, and like it starts to make a difference in 2021. Before that, it was pretty much aligned with their benchmark, not really outperforming it. But starting in 21, you can see that there's a big move where the black line goes up and the red one goes up as well, which is the, uh, the, the benchmark, but not as far. So if we had that, if I had that done this video a few years ago, I would have told you, you know what? It's great, but in the end, if you add the value of the closing fund plus all those distribution, you have to reinvest those and then you're going to end up with the same result as an ETF portfolio. But not too long ago, they made a major shift. And since I follow that every year, and if you want to have like the full article on that, I put the in the link description below, you can go on moosemarkets.com. You will find it under the dividend investing section. I did a complete review there. It's being updated yearly. So what is interesting is in 2020 and 2021, they shifted their portfolio towards energy sector. So back then the energy sector was a lot larger than simply 15, 16% that we saw earlier. And that explained the big move where it gave them a push to outperform their benchmark and obviously outperform the TSX. So that was quite interesting because they were doing okay, but 
towards like over the past three years they've done amazingly because of that major shift and now we see they have cashed their profit they have lowered their position uh, in the energy sector so that tells me that the management is not just sitting on their chair and just waiting to get their fees collected because it's still a MER fee of 1% so you still have to c consider that when you invest but then again they did something to value to to justify the fees they're charging you. So this brings me to the final section of this video where we have to discuss the catch, right? There must be a catch somewhere because this investment vehicle looks like it's perfect. Well, actually it's not perfect, but it's not that bad either, especially as opposed to all the other high income solutions. The first one I don't like is actually the distribution. As you can see here, and I just pulled out the past two years, but over the past 10 years at least, there are no distribution increase. That means you still receive the same 10 cents per unit every single month. So it's great for income. So you get your 10 cents, everything is cool. But the problem is if you invest, just to get that eight, nine, 10% distribution yield. Well, the price of the closed end fund is not gonna fluctuate that much because all the total return is found in the distribution. And the problem with the distribution is it's stuck to the same amount. So this means that if you need $50,000 today to retire, and then you invest all your money in the in, uh, canoe income fund, you're gonna get $50,000 today next year, in five years, in 10 years, and when inflation kicks in and the $50,000 that you need is now 80,000, you're still gonna receive $50,000 from Kanui. So you have to consider that in your plan. So it's not necessarily a bad investment, but if you do it from an income perspective, well then, you suffer from a small dividend cut every single year and that dividend cut is inflation. The second thing I don't like too much, and again, you can see that in the full article I wrote on moosemarkets.com, is the turnover. Every year since I started to follow this fund, I see a huge turnover in the top 25 stocks. So what you see there is the top 25 when I review it last fall. What is shocking is you see eight position out of 25 that are in green at the bottoms. So Mondelez, uh, Schlumberger, Canadian Pacific Railway, Philip Morris, Eleven Health, AstraZeneca, Stenovis, and Magna International they were added over the past 12 months and they were not there when I did my review in 2022. Kind of interesting as well, because when I did a quick look at those top 25, if you go back to the current top 25, again, we have a lot of turnover. So a lot of turnover means a lot of capital gain that is being generated within the fund. So that means that they will have to pay more taxes. And also, it also tells you that the fund's performance are highly um, dependent on how management is able to catch the next good opportunity. So they did incredibly well when they invested in the energy sector and that created a big boost for the fund performance, but overall they are very highly dependent on that. So if they make any different, like if they make any bad moves, well, they're, they're gonna take a hit and then it's gonna be harder. So long story short, should you invest in canoe income fund? Well, I'm not your advisor, so I cannot tell you what to do, but now you know that you invest in a fund that is 100% invested in equities, which means it's going to bring a lot of volatility to your portfolio. It's not gonna be lower volatility than any other index fund that is for sure the second thing is it is well diversified across sectors it has outperformed its benchmark it has outperformed the key market and it does pay a very generous yield those are all true keep in mind the distribution doesn't move so if you do not reinvest that money and you depend on that income to retire well you're gonna start with a filet mignon and then you're gonna end up with peanut butter in 25 years from now with the same budget. So you have to keep that in mind as well. And finally, high turnover rate. Well, they better be right all the time because if not, they're not, in the, they're not in the buy and old game where they do 
a, a good analysis now and they benefit from that stock for several years. They do that turnover, of course, to generate the income as well, because if not, they will not be able to make those distribution. So those are the two major flaws, not the end of the world. And for a high income investment project solution, pretty good. So let me know in the comment if you have invested in Canoe or if you know any other great investment product that shows a high income and actually has been performing. Not for two years, but for five and 10 years, because a lot of them has ap appeared over the past two, three years. Those are like super easy to look good on prom night. So I want to know about long term performance where you can use actual benchmark. So let me know in a comment and don't forget to give me a thumbs up, like the channel and subscribe to make sure to do not miss next video on next Thursday. And until then, don't forget to stay invested.